few words from James, the epistle. So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, but slow to speak, and slow to wrath. For wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself and goes away and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the world. This one will be blessed in what he does. If anyone among you thinks he is religious and does not bite his tongue but deceives his own mind, this one religion is useless, pure, undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit the orphans and widows in their troubles and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. Amen. One day a man was walking casually along a country lane and he had his dog with him and he had his donkey with him and they were walking along this country lane enjoying a pleasant walk and as they were going round a corner so a van, a pickup truck came speeding round the corner and knocked them off the road into the ditch. Ah. The old man, having recovered, decided to sue the driver of the truck, seeking to recoup some of the costs of the damages. And while the old man was in court, he was on the stand, the counsel for the defence cross-examined him. Um, and they cross-examined him by asking a simple question. I want you to answer yes or no to the following question. The, the counsel said to him, did you or did you not say at the time of the accident that you were perfectly fine? The old man said, well, me and my dog and, and my donkey, we were walking along the road. And the counsel for the defence said, stop, stop. I asked you to tell me Yes or no? Did you say at the time of the accident that you were perfectly fine? And the old man said, well, it was like this. Me and my dog and my donkey were walking along the road and the council for defence says, stop! Stop! I ask you to tell me yes or no. Did you or did you not, yes or no, did you or did you not, yes or no, did you or did you not say at the time of the accident that you were perfectly fine, yes or no? Well, me and my dog and my donkey were walking along the road. Your Honour, said the council, this man is not answering my question. And the judge stopped and looked and thought and he said, I think he's not answering your question because you're not listening to what he's got to say. Why don't we let him speak? And so the old man, he was able to tell his story and he said, well, me and my dog and my donkey were walking along the road and this truck 
came round the corner too fast and knocked us into the ditch. The driver stopped, got out of the truck, saw my dog badly injured, went back to the truck, got his rifle and shot the dog. Then he saw my donkey that had broken leg and lying in a terrible state. And so he shot it. Then he said to me, how are you? And although I had a broken leg and a broken arm, I did say, I'm perfectly fine. I'm talking about listening this morning. I'm talking about listening and how Jesus listened to people and how we can listen to people and how when we really listen and when we really hear all that's going on, what a difference it makes. Jesus listened to many people and the things that he heard made a great difference to the actions that he took. Um, When a rich ruler came to Jesus and he said to him, um, the rich ruler was telling him that he'd kept all the commandments and obeyed um, God and loved God. And Jesus listened to this, but knew there was something more. He heard that man's story, but then he said to him, now I want you to give up all that you have. Sell all your possessions, give them to the poor and come and follow me. That rich man, that rich man, what he heard was too hard for him. And we're told that he went away very sad. Jesus listened to his story, but that man didn't like what he heard when he listened to Jesus. Jesus listened to lots of other people. Um, When um, Nicodemus came to him, he was an intellectual man, and he came to him, and he came to him at night, because he didn't want anybody else to hear or know that he'd come to Jesus. And Jesus listened to him. And Jesus told him how he must be born again in order to know the kingdom of heaven. What a fantastic message that was. Elk Weinham, um, let me get this right, Weilhammer is blind. He's a blind man. And yet on May the 25th, 2001, he reached the peak of Mount Everest. Suffering from a degenerative eye disease, he lost his sight when he was 13, but that didn't stop him. On a mountain where 90% of climbers never make it to the top, and 165 had died previously in trying to do it, Eric succeeded, despite his blindness. Eric succeeded because he listened. And he listened well. He listened to the little bow that was tied to the um, rope in front of him held by his guide. He listened to the instructions that he was given by the other climbers. And he listened as he dug his axe into the ice He listened to the noise it made, telling him whether the the ice was solid or soft. And he listened to the sound that, that got him safely to the top of Mount Everest. And that was an amazing achievement. Jesus listened to people. Jesus listened and had people come to him all the time. I can give you many examples of how Jesus wanted to hear what people had to say, to hear their story. 
when the disciples were turning the children away, Jesus said, let them come. Let the little children come unto me, for as such is the kingdom of heaven. But Jesus also listened to God. Jesus listened to people and he heard their story. But Jesus also spent time listening to his heavenly Father. And we're told, and we're told in John, um, in the book of John, it says, it says here, it says, the words I say to you are not just my own. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. You see, Jesus was in touch with his Father. Jesus was listening to what God was telling him to do and to say. So Jesus didn't only listen to other people, but he listened to God. We live in a very noisy world. We live in a world where it's difficult to find silence. There is always noise going on round about us. You know, if we were quiet now, let's just be quiet for a moment and see what we can hear. Cars going by, birds outside, people in the distance talking. There's different things that we hear all the time. It's difficult, isn't it, to find silence. It's difficult to listen sometimes because there's so much distracts us. I was thinking this week about what I was going to be talking to you about this morning. And I was thinking about listening and I was thinking about all the things that um, we listen to. There are things that we listen to and the things that we hear. Um, Julie, my wife, um, listens to a lot of and watches a lot of television, soap operas on the telly, EastEnders, Coronation Streets um, and others. And they're often on while I'm sitting there doing other things and I'll um, be reading or watching or doing something else and I, I hear these words and see a little bit about what's going on. I don't pay a lot of attention to it. But I think that people are addicted to listening to this sort of thing. They're listening to what they hear on the tally. You know, the storyline that, that says it's okay to have an affair. It's okay to go and beat somebody up. It's okay to go and get drunk. It's okay, you know, to... uh, uh, Just, I can't go into all of the, the, the plots that they cover, but we're taught that these are things, we listen to these things, and we're taught that these things are the things that happen in everyday life. These are the things that should be important to us, that we've got that big house and that big car. These are the things that we hear. When we watch the adverts on tally, they tell us that we need that latest super-duper um, washing machine um, or you know hair straighteners or that latest perfume or whatever it is. These are the things that we hear. These are the things that that people are listening to today. These are the things that people are believing that these are the important things because that's what they hear. What are you listening to? What are you listening to that is important to you? What do you spend your time listening to? I listen to the news sometimes and I just get so depressed and so... Ah, it just, you know, it just wants, my head wants to explode sometimes when I listen to all the bad things. But you know, that's just one side. They only tell us the news that they think is going to shock us and that's going to get people's attention. You know, we're not hearing any good news. We don't hear of the missionaries that have gone out and saved lives. We don't hear of the good things that are going on. I've started watching God TV. 
And there's some great messages on there of people that have gone out and are helping people that, you know, we just don't see on or hear on normal television. What are you listening to? Are you listening sometimes to the things of this world and are they influencing you? Or maybe, maybe you listen to the voice of God. When you look in the morning and see the sun rising and a beautiful sunset at the end of the day, do you hear God's voice in there? Do you hear God saying, let there be light? And God called the light day and the darkness night. When you look around and you see we live by the seashore, when you look over the sea, do you look out and wonder at the vastness of God's creation? Do you look at those that beautiful sea? When you go swimming in it, do you hear God's voice saying, let there be an expanse between the waters to separate water from water? So God made the expanse and separated the waters under it. And then, when you look at the land and the dry ground, do you hear God's voice saying, let the water under the sky be gathered to one place and let dry ground appear? God spoke these things into existence. When we experience them, when we see them, Do we hear God's voice in that? Do we see God's voice in creation all around us? When we look at our pets and see animals, do we think that God said that he would create all living things, all the fish in the sea, all the birds in the the air, all the animals over the ground? Do we hear God calling them into existence? when we look around us, when we look at this beautiful world that is created, I know we've made a mess of it in many ways, but it's still a beautiful world that God created. Do we hear God's voice in it? Peter read to us this morning, he read to us from James, and he read some amazing words from James, um, chapter 1, verse 19 onwards, and I'm just going to find them in my notes, which are now in a mess as usual. And verse 22, it says, Do not deceive yourself by just listening to his word. Instead, put it into practice. If you listen to the word, but do not put it into practice, you are like people who look in a mirror and see themselves as they are. Do you look in a mirror? Um, just, just where, I'm sorry about this image, guys, sorry about this, but where, when I get out of the shower, um, there's a mirror there. Um, and and um, often I'll get out of the shower and I'll look at myself and I'll, I'll make a comment which says something like, hello, handsome, or oh, oh, you're looking good today. Oh, sorry, um, it's not an image you want to uh, dwell on, so please don't. But James is saying that um, we listen like that, we look, and it's as if we're looking in a mirror. And we see ourselves exactly as we are. But then, what do we do? We walk away from the mirror and forget exactly what we look like at all. He said we listen like that. He said we listen and we hear. And we think, well, that sounds great. That sounds good. The word of God, well, isn't it fantastic? And then we just leave it behind and we walk away. And it makes no difference to our lives. It makes no difference to what we do. It makes no difference to our actions. If you listen to the word, 
but do not put it into practice. It's like looking in a mirror. You see yourselves. You take a good look at yourself and then go away and at once forget what you look like. But if you look closely into the perfect law, God's word, the law that sets people free and keep on paying attention to it and do not simply listen and then forget, but put it into practice, you will be blessed by God in what you do. Do you want to be blessed by God? you want God to pour out his blessing on you today? Here's how to do it. Follow what it says in his word. Listen to what God is saying to you. I think often we've lost the habit of listening. I remember how Elijah was um, on a, a on a mountain in a cave, and God spoke to him and said, "Elijah, what are you doing here?" And Elijah said, "Um, people are trying to kill me, I've run away. And God said, listen, I'm going to speak to you. And then there came um, a wind, a mighty rushing of wind that was blowing and destroying the mountain and there were rocks falling. And Elijah was listening, but he didn't hear anything from God. And then came an earthquake. And the earthquake was... You can read this in um, 1 Kings, by the way. Um, I forget the chapter. Um, But the earthquake, um, and Elijah was listening to this earthquake and he couldn't hear God speaking through all that noise. And then there was fire. There was fire burning up the mountain and Elijah couldn't hear God. And, And then everything went quiet. And Elijah went and stood at the mouth of the cave. And then he heard that still, small voice of God speaking to him. God does speak today. I've heard people say that God's quiet because um, nobody listens to him. But God speaks. God's spoken to me many times. Many times. And what a great thing it is when God speaks. God speaks through his word. He spoke to me through his word. I was having a terrible time and I opened my Bible and I started reading and I read about the woman who came and touched the hem of Jesus' garment which had nothing to do with what I was should have been reading what, what I was going through. And I remember just crying out, why God? And I threw my Bible away. And I turned on the tally and I was listening to Sky Sports and behind Sky Sports there was a Christian radio program that you could listen to and I went to that and they were talking about the same story so I just threw the remote down and turned it off and I went to church on Sunday and there in the pulpit was our pastor then John Webster and he read and he read the exact same story and I listened I started listening thinking God you have got something to say to me And then he read on, he read on about how that man had come to Jesus and asked him to go and save his daughter, but his daughter had died. And Jesus said to him, don't be afraid, just believe. And when I heard those words, don't be afraid, just believe, I knew that that was God speaking to me. I knew that all that I had to go through And it was quite a harrowing experience that I had to go through. I was in danger of losing my job. I was in danger of um, all sorts of things. People were lying about me. But I knew that God was in it because God spoke to me through his word. He said, don't be afraid. Just believe. As a result of that, the law of this country was changed. The case that I was in made new law, helping people who go to industrial tribunals, helping many people. I didn't know that at the time, 
but God spoke to me. He said, don't be afraid. Just believe. I am in charge. I am the God. Listen to me. Don't listen to what anybody else is saying. Listen to me. What are you listening to today? Are you listening to the world in everything that it tells you? Are you listening to the world through the TV and through the papers? Are you listening to people who tell you that you need to get promoted at work, that you need to have this the next um, um, model of car? Are you le- listening to people that tell you that you know you've got to um, wear certain clothes or what are you listening to? What is it that you are hearing that is making a difference in your life? Jesus, after he'd been crucified and um, had risen from the dead, Jesus, they c- killed him on the cross. Jesus had died as that sacrifice for our sin. Jesus did that for us because he loves us. Jesus met with his disciples on the beach one last time. Jesus spoke to Peter and Jesus, when they finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of God, son of John, sorry, do you truly love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. And Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. This morning, when you get up every day, I'm sure that you commit the day to God. Do you get up and read his word and pray to him and talk to him? It's a great way to start the day. But do you hear Jesus saying, Maria, Kathy, Kate, do you hear Jesus saying to you, do you love me? Feed my sheep. Do you hear Jesus telling you to go and serve him in the way that he has called you? Are you listening to what Jesus wants you to do and how he wants you to serve him in your life? Are you listening to that small voice? Are you listening to the voice of God in creation? Jesus made a habit and makes a habit of listening to us. Are you making a habit of listening to him? One final story. There was a um, man who went for a, a, a job. It was a few years ago when Morse code was being used and a Morse code was a way of communicating. And this man um, applied for a job as a Morse code um, operator. His job would be to listen to the Morse code and write down what it said and also to send communication by Morse code. And... There was a job for a Morse code operator and this man went for the job. And when he got to the um, place for the interview, he walked in and there was an office, there was lots of people talking and lots of um, noise and lots of hustle. And on the counter, 
um, was, was a note which said, if you've come for the interview, fill out one of these forms and sit down until you're given further instructions. And so the man went over to the desk and he picked up this form and he picked up a pen and he went and he sat down and there was a number of people also um, gone for this interview and they were all filling out these forms and they were all sitting there and wondering what was going to happen and there was more people arriving and there was more noise. And um, just just as people were, were moving around and wondering what was going on, this young man, he got up, he walked over and he walked through into an office under the side. And everyone looked and thought, well, where's he going? What's going on? Anyway, a few minutes later, the man came out, followed by another man, and this man looked around and said, thank you for all for coming, but this man has got the job. And everyone started to, what, but we haven't even been interviewed. But what about us? We've not even been considered. And the, um, obviously the manager, as he was, um, said, while you've all been sitting there, you should have been listening. There was Morse code being played, which said, when you filled out the form, come into the office. This is the only man that heard it. This is the only man that's got the job. The rest of you can go home. There's lots of noise in this world. There's lots of noise, lots of things for us to listen to. But we need to filter out what is important. And we need to make sure that in our lives we are listening to that still small voice. That voice of God. And that, when we hear it, It makes a difference to our lives. Don't just listen and ignore it. But God will bless you immensely if you follow him. If you listen and follow his word. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your message and your word this morning. And we just pray that that seed will touch our hearts. Father, We do live in a noisy world that is full of distraction, full of sound. Lord, we just pray that you will help us to listen and to hear your voice and that when we hear, it will impact our lives and that it will change our lives and that we will follow and do your will. So help us, Father, we pray to hear your word, to hear your message and to follow your word. Father, we thank you that you do speak and we just pray that we will receive that blessing from you as we hear and follow your word. And we ask this in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen.